Um, my name is John Ghost here. I'm from the, the company that you heard so much about, the Kenyan company. Uh, with 17 staff around the world, where you, we've grown fairly recently. So, um, uh, our company is called Ushahidi. We make software for collaboration, real time collaboration during disaster response. Um, just to give you a bit of background, because I'm not going to talk about my company, I'm going to talk about participation and um, uh, sort of groupthink uh, technologies. Um, so, a few months ago in September, uh, I was at another TEDx event called TED Exchange in New York, and I heard uh, a great talk by um, Melinda Gates, who uh, was uh, thinking about Coke. And she was actually thinking about uh, Coke in the context of public health and global development, which uh, I had never heard before. And what she was talking about was <clears throat> The idea that Coke is pervasive, it crosses cultures, it crosses boundaries, it crosses, uh, crosses uh, political stances, and um, it's sort of everywhere. And she was thinking, why has Coke been so um, successful at getting its products in, in so many different parts of the world, uh, in places where we can't get public health uh, innovations and technologies? Um, so, uh, the, so Coke is um, very much... Uh, uh, mass produced. Uh, it's, she started to dissect what, uh, um, what this meant and, and sort of how they were going about their, their um, execution. Um, there, so what is it about Coke? What is it about Coke that makes it so pervasive? Um, so much so that uh, every person on the planet could have at least one Coke uh, during a week and we'd still have enough left over for all of Asia to have two. Um, <laughs> so um, so she started to talk about what this, what this looked like and what Coke does very well. So, and this was three things. One is real-time um, uh, feedback. So getting response from the field very quickly and then enacting uh, on those changes um, as rapidly as possible. Two, um, which uh, we just heard so much about, which is local production, using local resources, local entrepreneurs, local um, distribution channels. And then the third uh, was... Um, Marketing, uh, Coke, some, something that does, uh, Coke uh, does very well, uh, which is marketing and branding and, and getting those uh, translations occurring. Um, and what this got me thinking about is that we often think about uh, these types of, of technologies and, and, and missions as being very innovative. When it, in fact, um, I, I would say participation is probably one of the oldest things as humans that we do. We've been participating, collaborating with each other since um, forever. Um, my wife would argue if listening is an, is an innovation, I'm not really an innovator. So, you know, <laughs> um, it's, it's something that we've always done or have always uh, been uh, expected to do. Um, so, in other words, it's old news. And um, this is an example of, of collaboration. This is a market in Chennai. Um, uh, it's an example of trade, bartering, uh, participation at mass scale without very much technology, uh, just people sort of at work. Um, this is another example of good marketing, um, which uh, I think the Greeks did very well, um, uh, selling this idea of a horse to their enemies, and it resulted in uh, something that they wanted to see happen. Um, so uh, this idea of, of, of crowdsourcing, of, of participation, of, of helping each other perform tasks isn't exactly new. It's just sort of uh, rethinking, uh, sort of hearkening back to old ways of doing things. Um, and it's something that we're very much involved with as a platform. Um, and uh, I'm excited to see more and more organizations sort of going back to, to this idea. Um, there's actually a lot of innovation. This isn't the problem that we have in this sector, I would say. I would argue that we have more innovation, more tech, uh, technological achievements, more uh, great ideas than we've ever had in the history of time, um, at least human uh, time. But what we haven't had is a good way to market those ideas. So we actually have a branding problem. Um, how do we get people to use all these great ideas? And how do we get all these great ideas to translate um, as effectively as Coke um, and um, as Melinda Gates so aptly put it? Um, so I'd like to uh, borrow two terms from physics, a class that I was very uh, interested in but not so great at. Um, <laughs> friction uh, being one, uh, which uh, 
Uh, this, I found this, uh, I had a, a more technical uh, explanation, but I found this one last night um, on a website called uh, fearofphysics.com. <laughs> and uh, so you can think of uh, friction as the Joker and motion as Batman. Um, it, uh, it's, it's the enemy of, of motion. It's the enemy of moving things forward. It's the enemy of, of advancement. Uh, and then the other word is attraction. Pulling things, uh, the, the effect of one object to pull other objects to it. Um, this could be many different types of attraction. I'm th- sure you can think of many. Um, and ultimately, what this comes down to is uh, these are uh, mechanisms that I used to describe branding, which is um, trying to reduce friction, trying to encourage people to use things, and trying to attract them to it, make it, make it accessible. Uh, how do we make these things accessible to them? Um, one of the things that happens, I think, in this sector is um, there's a lot of... Uh, so uh, people think of branding, and they sort of, it seems to get amalgamated into, let's stamp my logo over everything. Uh, let's put our name on everything. Let's say this project was funded by so-and-so and supported by these guys, and you know, these guys did this bit too. Um, and what that, in, uh, in effect, does is it increases the um, cognitive costs um, of, of the consumer of that, whatever that product is designed to do. So um, I have to think about more. I have to know, be aware of more, um, as opposed to thinking about what I'm doing with this tool uh, and what it's going to be used for. Um, and this is a type of friction. This is a type of um, uh, retardation of progress in getting people to adopt uh, these different technologies and tools that, w- that may, in fact, be in their best interest. Um, the other thing, I mean, we heard so much about excess and uh, giving too much or not making sure the stuff that we're giving is working. Uh, another example of a type of friction, uh, just um, in a different way. Uh, so when we're thinking about technologies, we sort of have to think about um, the branding. We have to think about how we're going to position these things in ways that are attractive to the people that we're trying to get to use them and adopt them. Uh, We have to think about doing it locally. We have to think about how much um, can we move to where these uh, users or constituents will be and um, how we can reduce costs for ourselves. It also saves money to produce things locally. As we've seen uh, in the previous example of Coke, um, they're often selling the brand more so than they're selling the, the product itself. Coke in Uganda tastes very different from Coke here because they're using local um, uh, sugar canes and so forth to uh, flavor the, the soda water. Um, so it's not exactly the same product. It's being adapted for the local market. And then finally, feedback. Uh, we have to listen. Uh, we have to listen to people um, when we're applying these tools, and we have to listen to what they tell us and how... Uh, we can adapt these to be better uh, and serve them better. Um, so a uh, more practical example is just working with local resources. So um, whether you're in India, whether you're in uh, many parts of Africa, um, if, if we're all coming up with great ideas, I would say one of the greatest ways to get people to participate and use these things is to uh, transfer at least some or um, uh, empower uh, local entrepreneurs to um, participate. Uh, since we're talking about participation. Uh, This is a a shot from uh, the company that I started in Uganda called Africa. Uh, We make, uh, so I sort of enable these guys to do the work that um, many NGOs around the world uh, do uh, traditionally, uh, but using uh, uh, people from around the world, people from wherever they come from. Um, So transferring that work, that labor, that that, that capacity uh, to the region as a, builds a lot of capacity. It saves money for those organizations, but it also um, empowers us to understand their needs better. Um, this is another shot. Great software developer um, that I worked with for a long time, Moses Magisha. Um, and just sort of going back to the, the greater idea of participation, uh, it's, it's fundamentally, I think, uh, in our own best interest to uh, figure out these two-way Um, communication channels and it makes all of our innovations much more effective and it's better branding. So thank you.